high. Maybe. I think we should go to the left. I'm looking at my... No, we're not in the middle. Welcome back to Spoonsville. And today we're covering... The Great, Great Beauty. Beauty. Yeah. Italian film came out... The 2010s, I want to 2013, say. 2013, ah, I feel like. Yeah, that sounds right. I don't know. It's so good. That might have been nominated for something, actually. Best, best international film? I don't, I don't know. Oh! Oh! It, it just... It's one of those that... Hits when you need a refilling of your soul's kind of been depleted a little bit, it brings a little of that, you know, heavenly elixir and just fills yeah. up your stores a little bit. So, new segment to help for those that haven't seen it but still want to watch us talk about movies. We're going to try and explain the movie, but we're giving ourselves only 10 seconds. So you get a very, 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 very brief synopsis, and then we'll gonna dissect it from there. Do you want to go first? You take turns? You want to go first? I don't know. We didn't agree yet. We decide on whether or not Rock, we're gonna... Scissors. Rock, okay. Rock, Rock, paper, paper scissors. scissors. Ah! It's me. <laughs> okay. okay, fine. Starting Hello. now. Okay. It is set in Rome. It is about this journalist called Jep. He's famous for his wonderful journalism and for writing a novel in his 20s and for throwing but the best parties. <laughs> that is too short. That's it. Yeah. Next time we'll... Uh... Start again. Start again? Okay. We'll give you another it's 10 too seconds. Short. 15. So, give me a 15. I have to start again. I can't. Like, we're going to have to cut this. I don't know if this is going to work. 20 seconds. 20 seconds will do. Yeah. Okay. That'll give a good. Okay. And go. Okay. So the movie is set in Rome. It is about this guy, Jep. He's a journalist. He's famous for his wonderful journalism and a book, a novel that he wrote in his 20s and for throwing incredible parties. And he's also famous for knowing a lot of you know, affluent people in Rome. And so, yeah. <laughs> ah! There you go. It's a good start, starting okay. point. Yeah. yeah, so that's basically, that's the movie. Yeah. yeah. And there's no beginning, middle, or end. No. It's just an, a, a day in the life yeah. or a Kind of like week, similar to... Similar to... Totoro. Totoro, yeah. yeah. It's like a week or a month in the life of Jet. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those movies, it's a contemplative thing. It, it really is for, I think, people that really like and think about art a lot or life. Well, the thing for me is a very, a very Herzogian, if I can say that. There's a lot of essential images I find that in that movie. Just every frame could be a painting. You know, like there's there's just beautiful shots, of whether it's the, the the parties or the landscapes or them walking through these these um, kind of off limit buildings and these sculptures and all these these gardens and everything. So, I mean, it's a great setting. You get a chance to get to know a lot of the characters. Um, and even though you're right, there's not so much a beginning, middle, and end. I, you, you, you get invested, I felt. It's interesting. It's, it's, uh, you get to see how people that have a lot of money live. <laughs> a lot of people who have you know connections and are just living in complete and utter decadence, basically. It's but, a good word. For a lot uh, of decadence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very interesting because... You like Jep. It's not he's not mm -hmm. the kind of person which I know I'm not saying that if if you're affluent you're automatically a, a bad person. Yeah. I don't think so at all. So I like him because he's the kind of um despite his the fact that he's extremely well off and well connected, he's very much human. Yeah. And he's incredibly self-aware and he's very he gets along very easily with different people from all walks of life and it's it's it was nice for me i think he's a great depiction of someone who is like that um in an affluent setting because i think you find people that like that in different settings yeah. maybe they are someone from a poor background and someone from a much a richer background right. there isn't anything there that's kind of like un you know inaccessible yeah. to a certain class yeah. it's accessible to everybody the conversations that are had yeah and it's just about a person who is just much more self-aware. Mm -hmm. I, I would say probably even more um, empathetic, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and just much more self-reflective. Yeah. Yeah, non-judgmental. Non I really like that about him. Yeah. And he's also incredibly confident. He's in mm -hmm. extremely secure in himself. Yeah. And doesn't care about being judged by these skin-deep um, friends of his, right. affluent friends of his. Right. Like, he has a guy... Who, who manages a stripper, yeah, uh, like a strip true. club, yeah, and then um, befriends the daughter of yeah. that guy, and then takes goes on to takes yeah. to take her out to these you know lavish yeah. events. 
You get and people judging him you get, for it. Yeah, you get people judging him and her. Like, yeah. what is she wearing? Yeah. But she on But he honestly doesn't care, yeah. and I really like that about yeah. him. And and he has that friend of his, the the strip club manager. They've been friends for a very long time. Yeah. And he's he's the kind of um, I think aging artist type that you would aspire to. And and he just sees, are you a decent person? You know, yeah. are you a giving? Are you a a good? You know, a decent person. And um, and he interviews this one art, this performance artist that he just finds very pretentious and kind of you know too too up in her head and and too full of masks and and BS and just wants to uh, confuse people and confuse herself. She doesn't really know how to explain what she's trying to do, what she what she's about. But for him, it you know he's like even though he considers himself a writer, he struggles with. Uh, other artistic types that are more about just being confusing and weird and novel and different just for the sake of it and yeah. he's like yeah but do something honest to yourself he has his one friend who keeps trying to write something like a, a theater screenplay and he's always like uh or uh, for the theater and he's always like yeah but write something just i don't know that you that what you went through you know and yeah and i, I like that like you said you'll have friends that of uh, people that own strip clubs because they just seem more real than a lot of actually the artistic people that he runs into. Yeah. You know. I did like that interview a lot when he's interviewing the artist. Yeah. A lot of there are a lot of artists who realize the confusing who who hold on to confusing people because they know that if people don't understand something, they'll yeah. uh, perceive it as um it must be really profound. Must be a profound work of art yeah. here. And you have a lot of people who, okay, all I have to do is to dress a certain way. Yeah. And that portrays me as a an artist automatically or as someone who's deep thinking mm -hmm. or who's mysterious, etc. I love that Jeff is the kind of person who sees right through that because everybody else in this, in Rome, yeah. is so mesmerized by this yeah. artist. Everybody who's there to see her crazy show yeah. is completely in awe of it. And and he's just like, okay, what are you actually doing? You yeah. know, and he, he, she's just spewing these things like, okay, well, I, I live on vibrations. What is a vibration? Yeah. And she can't even explain it. And in the end, she confesses to the fact that she doesn't even know what she's talking about. And yeah. that's where he's coming from. You yeah. know, he's the kind of person who doesn't just take things at face value. Um, and he digs deeper. And, I, and he understands that people have these masks that they put on. And he's also very much self-aware of the, yeah. the fact that he also he has his it. own he does it he too does he it has it his well. own flaws yeah. and he does certain things yeah. and when he befriends the the, um, the stripper i remember he's talking to him to her about how you know at a, at a, a funeral mm -hmm. is they're, they're preparing for a funeral and he's like a funeral is a is a is a show like it's a production mm -hmm. and you do a b c you do all of these things and 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 at the funeral, he does these. He performs these things that she, he was describing to her, mm. and she witnesses it. Mm. Yeah, he can be yeah. honest about his flaws, yeah. about the fact that he's not a perfect human yeah. being, and about the fact that he's sometimes dishonest, yeah. because yeah. these are all parts yeah. of us as human beings. Yeah. You play to certain things yeah. at different points yeah. in time. But the people I find that are most in that are insecure they don't want to point to their right. flaws they're not very yeah. they don't talk very easily about their flaws yeah. the scene i definitely remember the most from the first time watching it and it's still one of my favorites is the one the one time where they're having the they're drinking it's late on his balcony and his friends over and the one woman is you know kind of criticizing trying to i think maybe yeah. jep's self-confidence annoys her because of her insecurities. So she wants to be like, oh, you've only written one book and it was hardly even a book. And what are you acting like you're so cool and so sure of yourself and so okay with like, you have all the, you seem to have all the the responses to everything and all the, the wisecracks, you know? And then he, he basically explains, he's like, well, first of all, you know, we're, we're, we're getting older. We realize that uh, life is how it is. And there's kind of no need to really pretend more than that. We all know that we've had major screw ups. We all know that we're very fallible and, and, and we, we, we screw up all the time and that's okay. That actually makes life more enjoyable. And, you know, and, and he's like, well, look at you. He's like, I, I know the stuff I did, I did isn't really any better than the stuff you did, but you seem to want to portray this very successful, very like, um, exceptional version of yourself. Yeah. We, and then he just kind of goes down the list of ways that she really isn't super perfect in fact she kind of gets a lot of extra help she doesn't mention or a lot of her connections help her with all these successes that she kind of likes to show as uh just she just did it on her own 
you know, which again is like, well, be honest, be realistic. You, no one ever does anything on their own. You get help in so many ways from so many people and so many things. You know, with his case, like we talk about trivialities because, you know, we realize we don't have all the information and there's no point in trying to compete anymore, or try to be the smartest person in the room because yeah. really this companionship at the end of the day is what we need, especially at this point in our lives. Yeah. This is the important thing. That's, that's what I was trying you know. to, you know, there are a lot of people who who want to hold on to a certain image of themselves. You know, they have this idealized view of what a, the kind of person they aspire to be has to be into the kinds of things that they like. For example, some people will be like, Oh, we hate YouTube. You know, look down on YouTube. There are people who look down on YouTube and think that, you know, watching it makes them people who watch it are dumb. Right. And so I'll just do podcasts. That's mm. all I'll do. And I'll read the New Yorker. That is all I'll, I do because I am smarter. And if you watch YouTube, then you're a dumb person, right? So these people will hold on to this ide ideal sense of themselves, right? And may even be watching YouTube secretly, right? But like you, the person who openly loves YouTube, which I do, I love YouTube. Love um, the person who openly loves uh, loves YouTube, that, that, that person will chastise you for this thing mm -hmm. that they're probably doing in private because mm -hmm. YouTube is life. Yes. There's so many things to learn from there. Yeah. Like you want to have fun, go to YouTube. If you yeah. want to learn actual yeah. deep things, yeah. go to YouTube. Yeah. Everything, education, everything yeah. is there, right? Yeah. You know, you judge yourself harshly. Mm -hmm. um, if you are maybe kind of like taking the wrong course, what you perceive mm -hmm. to be the wrong course. And so if you see someone else watching YouTube, then you, because it's something that you do and you don't want to be doing, it's just mm -hmm. that reminder of, it's, it reminds you of this thing that you don't like about yourself. And so you judge it harshly. And I've, I've, I've struggled a lot to find people like Jep <laughs> much more, you know, people who don't care about their weaknesses and who are okay to be vulnerable, basically, mm -hmm. uh, about what they maybe can or cannot do. Yeah. And um, aren't really trying to live according to some kind yeah. of yardstick. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, just a lot of great interaction, a lot of great characters. I like how in the dinner, um, the, the 104 year old, uh, soon to be saint, I guess, uh, she really liked the, the one book Jep wrote. So they had dinner at his place and there was a cardinal there that I think was supposed to become Pope. I think yeah. that's what they're saying, but very unpope like right? Which is, that's the thing. People are human. And then he was always kind of trying to steal the conversation. You know, he was that, that classic conversational narcissist, narcissist that always needed to bring it back to him and talking about just whatever, cooking, yeah. you know, it was just a very, juicy uh, movie. such a juicy movie. Yeah. Maybe I like it because it confirms a lot of things, a lot of my, I, my world views. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that helps when a movie just speaks to you like that. Yeah. You it just relates so I much relate to it. I can relate so much everything. to it. Yeah. yeah. Things like sometimes people become friends with other people because they are artists, right? Mm -hmm. And that's it. We are both artists. And so we're going to be friends, right. but that is not enough yeah. just because you share in this one thing or, or this huge thing, yeah. maybe you, you both sell art and you're very good at it, but that does not mean anything in terms of whether or not you can actually be good companions. Mm -hmm. In reality, the things that you do, what you do doesn't necessarily, it's, it's not the thing that the kind of, it's not a solid glue to a good companionship for mm -hmm. me, as far as I'm concerned, because um, artist or not, you can have two people who are in the same field, but their personalities are very different. You know, like that guy who, who eventually leaves and yeah. is like, Rome does not work for me. He's dating this, this, well, not dating. He's pursuing this woman yeah. who is a writer and actress yeah. and all these things. And she's awful. She's yeah. an awful human yeah. being. And then everybody else, all the other artists around him, they yeah. love partying and yeah. they're extremely superficial, mm -hmm. but all of them are in the same field, mm -hmm. you know? And he, in the end, realizes that, okay, I do love art. We can both love art. Mm -hmm. People can love this one thing, but it doesn't, it's not the thing that's going to yeah. bring you together. Yeah. And so, um, which is why I like Jep, because mm -hmm. Jep doesn't only limit his interactions to other yeah. journalists. Yeah. Um, he interacts with people that are just rich. Yeah. And that's it. They don't even have a job. And that's that. Yeah. Or yeah. he interacts with, he has, he's, some of his friends are, you know, the strip yeah. um, club yeah. owner and yeah. the, and their, and, and the daughter. Yeah. Um, that is uh, the mark, yeah. I think, of a person who's truly living yeah. life. Yeah. You're not restricting yourself. You really, and you understand yourself more than just your title, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you understand that there's more to you than just your title. Yeah. 
um, because I think a lot of times people are very restricted by, the t by their title, understanding that if I want to maintain my status within this community, I cannot be cavorting with the likes of a strip, a stripper, you know? Yeah. Jep does not care. Yeah. I love yeah. people like that. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. uh, you know, he, he's surrounded by, you know, well-off dilettantes that don't really have to work for a living. She, yeah, you talk, ask one person, like, well, what do you do? He's like, I'm rich. I don't yeah. do anything. And the person that his friend is pursuing she just takes up a different artistic field just whenever it suits her because she's not actually committed to what it takes to be good at any artistic thing. She does it purely for the status of it. Oh, I want to be a writer. And then she wants to kind of attract this director, I think, who is going to direct a play. And she's like, well, now I want to do that or now I want to act. It all just kind of depends on who she's attracted to at the time to potentially get closer to them or just what does it serve in terms of attention and things like that. And there are people like that. But then there are people like Jep that it, it's just, are you a, an interesting person? Can I talk? Can I connect with you as, as human to human? That's all that matters. And he does seem to long for something, a, a more tangible relationship than the mm -hmm. passerbys he's encountered throughout yeah. his life. But at the same time, he still enjoys the, the moments of beauty that he finds mm -hmm. in his life. It, mm -hmm. As much as it's, it's so sur much surrounded by uh, such complete superficiality, mm -hmm. uh, he still finds... Um, your joy in that and and i think that's something that is really hard for people yeah um that's the good life there's a lot there's a lot it's a great movie great beautiful it's acting great. yeah um just great this is a definitely a reflection piece yeah <laughs> yeah yeah 10 out of 10 reflection piece 10 out of 10 yeah. reflection piece yeah. yeah absolutely fantastic movie oh yeah everything yeah. It's hard, I find, for movies to pull off dan dance or, or club scenes that really seem real and legit, but the way they did it, I'm like, yeah, I believe that all these people are here actually dancing and trying to escape their lives or the, the, their week or, you know, the, the, there's, there's so many interesting faces and, and so much you can get from each person that they, they show dancing, you know. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's just, it was uh, so easy to watch all the way through because there's so many interesting images and people and events and interactions. It's just, so, yeah. Yeah. Very yummy. Very yummy movie. All right. That's it. That's about it. That's it. That's definitely it. I, I 100% I, I know it. I Definitively notes, it. <laughs> Definitively. Yeah. All right. Bye, folks. Bye. Did yeah. we give it a rating?